All right. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me loud and clear? Can you just give me a quick thumbs up or maybe an emoji? All right. Thank you so, so much. So um, welcome, everyone, and uh, greetings from CZG Philippines. I am Trish Lopez, or MC, your host for tonight. And um, if, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Uh, CZG is actually the uh, uh, in science, CZG means the three uh, straight line configuration of celestial bodies, such as the sun, the moon, and the earth in a gravitational system. But here at CZG Philippines, we align the values of being optimally healthy, wealthy, and wise. And so um, if you're here for the first time, we have our uh, different programs for, for whatever you need to live optimally, holistically, and um, we have different um, days for it. But tonight, every Sunday, we have optimal, so optimal health program where we talk about uh, living a little bit healthier, if you want to lose weight, and uh, tonight will be a very interesting topic. But before we get to the main, um, the, the, the piece of the, the cake, uh, let me just give you some quick reminders. Uh, after this, we're, we're going to have a breakout room session. So please type down your, your name, city, occupation in the chat box, and then also add your breakout room numbers after your name. If you don't know your number, please get back to the uh, friend who invited you so you can have a little bit of chat um, about, what you've, about what you will have heard tonight. So um, uh, during the presentation, we're going to also have our mics muted for better sound quality. But I highly encourage everyone to turn on their cameras for better engagement. But if you don't want to, that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, so let me just quickly read down all of the people who are messaging in our group chat. We have Ayana Della greeting everyone in my Ayung Gabi Isatanan. Uh, he is from Cebu City. Welcome. We also have Titus Manuel greeting everyone a good evening. He is an IT and data privacy consultant from Quezon City. Welcome. And we also have Lizelle Guillepa uh, greeting everyone a good evening. Good evening to you as well. We also have Dalio Nabsan greeting everyone another good evening from Baguio City. He is an engineer. Okay, that's it's so so nice to hear from you guys, but keep keep every uh keep all your comments going we also have doc chanda we greeting everyone hello watching from bukid nun greetings all right okay so i don't want to waste more of your time but you know uh take no, take use of our uh group chat that we have here so we can have a more engaging um uh session but uh let me introduce to you our our amazing speaker for tonight. Uh, he is actually a family physician by profession in Marikina who is into integrative medicine. He is also very, very passionate in helping people reverse type 2 diabetes. And you know, he is one of our leading doctors, highly respected leader in our community. And I've been seeing him so much in our uh, in our meetings, and he's someone that I highly admire and respect as well, personally. So, um, guys, please help me welcome Dr. Rico Santos. Thank you, Chris, for that kind, kind introduction. You really are gorgeous to me. Magandang gabi po sa mga nanonood ngayon, wherever you are, welcome. And we hope that you are in good health, no? And my deepest gratitude to CCGPH, co-founders Olivia Fernandez Bernabe and Ryan Fernandez, the organizers of this event. This community has been very instrumental in getting me out of the cocoon of my humble clinic into the realm of public speaking. Salamat for giving myself a platform to give a message of a hope, no? Meron pang mga pag-asa ang ating mga health condition sa topic po natin ngayong gabi, intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. 
So why what is intermittent fasting and why should you do it? No, uh, meron po tayong two two parts. No, uh, tonight July thirty one, yung history of intermittent fasting and why, and yung second part po sa August seven yung yung fasting protocols or the the how to the best practices of intermittent fasting. So aside from weight loss, many studies show that it is it can have powerful effects on our body and brain and may even help you look younger and live longer it is currently one of the world's most popular health and fitness trends it is an important tool in helping people reverse type 2 diabetes and the metabolic syndrome when we eat is actually as essential as what we eat. So let us learn the basics tonight. No? So I am a doctor of medicine, family physician, a perpetual learner, no? advocate for wellness and optimal health, and biased towards real food nutrition and time-restricted eating, or what we call intermittent fasting. So my clinic is in Marikina, but I also practice now telemedicine. No? Even before the pandemic, I've actually been uh, seeing patients, coaching patients on weight management and type 2 diabetes prevention. Sabi nga, no? uh, I have read somewhere, no? whether it's true or not, no? A quote from Thomas Edison, the doctor of the future will give no medications, but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame, diet, and in the cause of prevention of disease. So my greatest passion now is to teach people how to not need medicine, or at least to reduce it to a minimum. So at some point in our lives, several times in fact, karalasan na po natin ang hindi kumakain. When we were kids, kadalasan, when we are playing, or just nagkukwento na, no? hindi natin napapansin ang oras at gutom. No? A few times, no? naparusahan pa tayo ng ating mga magulang na huwag kumain ng kapunan. Ganun din sa ating mga pag-aaral. Diba? At natatandaan ko noon, when I was still in School of Medicine during our training, clerkship, internship, etc., madalas kaming nalilipasan ng butong. No? At wala namang nangyari masama sa atin. So as adults, when we are on a deadline at work, when we are engaged in our passions, we oftentimes miss meals. We came out just fine, unharmed, and unscathed. Abstaining from food is something all of us have done from time to time. No? This time, in this instant, we need to do it more intentionally, mindfully, and wisely. So, periods without food has been part of human existence since the beginning of mankind. Food has not always been readily available 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days in a year. For millennia, animals evolved in this cycle of food availability or scarcity, man included. We had to store food energy as body fat in order to survive when food is available and then utilize it when there is scarcity. No? Yan ang purpose po ng ating body fat. No? Pag wala po tayong makakain, ang tinakain ng ating katawan, yung stored fat. So we would have died long ago if we did not have the efficient storage and retrieval method of food energy. Extinct na sana tayo, matagal na. And intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating mimics the way our ancestors ate, no? No access to food 24-7, and we underwent alternate intervals of feast and famine. 
yin and yang, as the traditional Chinese medicine would say, you know. And we survived these challenges. Our body became more resilient, able to withstand future infections and other health challenges. This is called hormesis. No? There are opposing, these are opposing forces, and the body's default is always towards health. No? Ang katawan po natin ay self-repairing. No? Kailangan lang tutulungan natin. No? And there is always a balance no? towards health. No? The human body is adapted to this. And research in the past half century in Russia, Germany, and the U.S. show that abstaining from food actually optimizes our biological functions and restores a diseased body body back to normalcy. You should look up the documentary, The Science of Fasting, a 2011 film directed by Sylvie Gilman and De La Strelle, no? Yun. Hanapin nyo sa, ano, sa, sa internet yung documentary na The Science of Fasting, no? Pero doon, they talk more about prolonged, no? prolonged or extended fasting. So religions, major religions worldwide practice fasting. The Hindus, Muslims, Jews, Catholics, etc. It is deeply beneficial to the human spirit. No? As the Buddha would say, it is a path to enlightenment and healing. And our very own Savior, Jesus Christ, advocates for it. No? In, the, in the Mediterranean area, fasting is a tradition in the Greek Orthodox Church no? for 100 to 180 to 200 days in a year in one form or another. This must be also the reason why these people are healthier aside from the real food nutrition lifestyle. No? So remember this guy, Mahatma Gandhi? He, he has actually perfected fasting as a political tool. Yeah? He, he was actually able to secure yeah? in just independence from British rule. Yeah? And at one time, yeah? during uh, violence between Hindus and Muslims, yeah? to dissuade the violence, he actually uh, fasted for five days, no? Tumigil lang siya ng fasting, nung tumigil ng violence between his countrymen, no? And he was actually on the brink of death on the fifth day. No? Yung ganyang kapayat na si, no? si Mahatma Gandhi, no? Kaya ako hindi rin ako tatagal ng five days pag ako nag-fasting. So fasting is the voluntary abstention from eating for health, spiritual reasons, or even political reasons, as Mahatma Gandhi did. No? It is controlled. Food is readily available, but you choose not to eat. Starvation is the involuntary abstention from food. It is neither deliberate nor controlled, and you have no idea where the next meal will come from. Yan po ang pagkakaiba ng starvation versus fasting. No? And this guy, no, he, he is actually recorded in the Guinness Book of World Record, no? and also recorded in medical journals, no? mga 19... Mga 1910 or 20s. No? This is Angus Barbieri. He actually fasted, no? subsisting only on water, vitamins, and supplements for 100, 385 days. No? He started on the right, on the left, and after 385 days, and he was actually able to maintain 
in his lifetime. So, na, nakapag-survive siya for 385 days. No? With all that fat within him, no? yun ang food na tinatayin ng kanyang katawan. So, it is possible. No? So, ang problem po ngayon no? is polypharmacy. It is the use of multiple medications at the same time by one person. In short, a pill for every ill. Being on lots of different medicine, a person who is on quite a few different pills has more than one medical condition. And this is actually uh, unhealthy kasi meron tinatawag na drug interaction. Nag-interact po yung mga gamot. At magkaraniwan, kaya binibigay ang isang gamot dahil may side effect yung naunang gamot. For example, may side effect na hyperacidity. So, bibigyan ka na naman ng another drug for hyperacidity. So, nagpapatong-patong po ang gamot ng mga pasyente, lalo na sa mga elderly, sa mga seniors, sa may mga comorbidities. No? So, yan po ang dapat natin iiwasan to as much as possible. Um, we should only give individuals kung ano lang po ang kailangan nila. And dito po makakatulong ang ating uh, topic po ngayon. Ganito po karaniwan, how we treat lifestyle diseases today. No? It's true. Medicines are keeping us alive for longer. Life expectancy is longer. No? Your health lifespan is longer. But we have more medical problems. No? Yung lifespan mahaba man, pero yung kinatawag natin health span, no? yung quality of life, mas mababa kesa dun sa in totality yung lifespan. No? Mahaba nga ang buhay, pero... Marami namang karamdaman pinadaig. No? At most of these meditations are actually uh, symptomatic ang nangyayari. No? The drugs are only addressing the symptoms or the signs of the disease but not the root cause. No? And this, sadly, this has been the way we are trained no? as doctors. No? pharmacological treatment. No? Uh, sa totoo lang, minsan lip service talaga ang nutrition. No? So nakikita niyo doon sa illustration, kung meron po tayong infection like a UTI or a tonsillitis, pag nilalagnat ka at binigyan ka lang ng gamot para sa lagnat or para sa pain or para sa headache, no? Sure, maririlib yung pain, yung mga symptoms. But if you do not address the root cause, which is an infection, no, with the right antibiotic, the patient will not get better. No? Pero pag na, nagamit mo yung tamang gamot, in 7 or 10 days, the patients get better. No? the patients get better, no? And they are able to eventually stop the medication. Ganun po ang pag-treat ng mga um, infection. Pero ka, kasama ang palag in how we treat lifestyle diseases, ang pangkaraniwang advice sa atin is to Uh, take the medications lifetime. No? Ang ibig sabihin lang po nun, hindi po gumagaling yung sakit. No? Kasi hindi na-address yung root cause. No? Pangkarniwan, mga symptoms or signs lang. No? Yung pagtaas ng blood pressure, pagtaas ng mga cholesterol, triglycerides, uric acid, blood sugar, those are only signs of the disease process. No? So, hindi na-address ng mga gamot na ito, napakarami na po yan, yung pinakaugat ng sakit. No? 
lalong lalo na sa paggamot ng diabetes no pangkaraniwan ang mga gamot sa diabetes lalo na mga dating mga gamot no they actually cause weight gain no lalong lalo na yung insulin injection yung mga sulfonylureas yung nag-withdraw na sa market na rosiglitazone yung pioglitazone no they raise insulin and ang consequence po niyan is they increase heart attacks and death no pag yan po ang ginagawang treatment no yung metformin neutral po yan no maganda po yan no gamot no at isa sa mga well proven safe drugs for diabetes for weight loss no ito po yung mga bagong gamot yung mga SGL2 inhibitors at saka yung mga GLP-1 analogs ng mga bagong gamot po yan na, na pinpraises po dyan ang mga cardiologists. No? Kasi it lowers insulin, it decreases heart attacks and death. No? Pero meron pong mas magaling na paraan para mabawasan ang insulin, para mapababa ang insulin. And this is true what we eat no yung intermittent fasting at saka yung low carb eating pero bago tayo dumating doon ha ang pagkain po natin ay mayroong energy no it provides us with calories no lahat po ng pagkain may calories pero iba-iba ang content ng calories. Sa tingin nyo ba, ang epekto ng 100 calories of cookies ay pareho ng epekto ng 100 calories of broccoli? No? So, sa totoo lang, calories are not, all calories are not equally fatty. Depende po sa source ng calories. No? Pero parating sinasabi yung siko na ano yung siko meaning calories in calories out no na kailangan lang gawin natin ay bawasan ang kinakain through caloric restriction at tayo ay mag-move more or to exercise more no but in all the decades that uh, itinuturo ito ng mainstream medicine no Ganun pa rin ang nangyayari. Ha? Marami pa rin may problema sa weight at marami pa rin ang may diabetes at marami pa rin nagkakaroon ng mga sakit sa puso, stroke, etc. So, food actually contains another one, instructions. No? Meron pong instruction na ibinibigay ang mga food, hindi lang po energy na merong kakaibang hormonal response no different foods elicit varying hormonal responses no in particular to the dominating hormone insulin no when it is persistently elevated and both energy calories and hormonal response are important no Ito po ang pangkaraniwan nagpapataas ng insulin. Ang pinakamataas na spike ay caused by carbohydrates. Moderate lang ang protein. No? Ang mga fats, no? very minimal ang spike. No? So kung parati po tayong kumakain, masyadong madalas, lalo na kung puro carbohydrate pa, no? The more frequently eat, again, more, more insulin is secreted. Eventually, over time, decades actually, no? kasi very subtle, our body, our cells, first the liver, become resistant to insulin, meaning it takes a higher and a higher amount for it to drive the glucose into our cells, meaning to normalize blood sugar. No? Ganyan po ang nangyayari. No? Isang analogy po dyan ay yung 
Halimbawa, alcohol, no? Or sleeping pills, no? Sa umpisa, konti lang, lasing na tayo sa alcohol. Ganon din sa sleeping pills, no? Mga kalahating tableta lang, tulog na tayo. But as we use it more frequently, we need a higher and a higher dose to achieve the same effect as the original dose, no? So, ibig sabihin po, no, nagkakaroon po tayo ng tolerance or resistant to the drug, to the substance. Ganon din po sa insulin, no? Ang nangyayari, dahil sa overexposure natin sa insulin, no? Through frequent intake of refined carbohydrates and masyadong madalas na kumain, ayan, ang nangyayari, yung baseline ng original baseline natin ng insulin, tumataas na. No? It actually goes as high as 5 to 7 times higher. No? And this takes decades to eventually manifest into a disease. No? Like hypertension, gout, no? diabetes, no? even cancer. No? Pero it is a very, very preventable condition. No? Detrimental po sa ating kalusugan ang high insulin level. No? Just like any other hormone, no? tulad ng thyroid hormone, pag sobra ang thyroid hormone, you get toxic goiter, hyperthyroidism. Pag kulang naman siya, you get hypothyroidism, disease. No? Too high, too little, you get disease. Ganun din po sa insulin. Too, too high, too little, you get disease. Pag too high ang insulin, you get type 2 diabetes or insulin resistant. Pag kulang naman po ang insulin, yung tinatawag na type 1 diabetes. So kailangan talaga po ng insulin pag type 1 diabetes. So ito po ang consequence ng too much insulin circulating in our blood. Ang tinatawag na insulin resistant or metabolic syndrome. Ito po ay mga cluster of diseases no? na makikita sa mayroong metabolic syndrome. No? Mayroong heart disease, mayroong mga lipid problems, mga cholesterol, triglycerides, nagtataasan, uric acid, uh, blood pressure, no? type 2 diabetes. No? Alzheimer's is now being called type 3 diabetes. Cancer, yung mga problema sa fertility, no? polycystic ovarian syndrome. No? At actually, bago ka magkaroon ng type 2 diabetes, magkakaroon ka muna ng tinatawag na non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. No? Yan din po ang dahilan, kaya po tayo ay nag kakaroon ng weight gain no? or obesity. No? Yan po yung tinatawag na lifestyle, chronic lifestyle disease. No? So, sino ba ang matatawag mong metabolic health? No? Uh, metabolic health is best understood as the state of balance with the balance, state of balance the body maintains between storing and burning fat for energy. Pag nag-disrupt po yung balance na yan, sickness ang result. At meron po siyang limang markers, which is yung, yung, yung waist circumference, yung fasting blood sugar, blood pressure, yung triglycerides, yung HDL cholesterol, tinatawag natin better known as the good cholesterol. No? At kung meron na po kayong mga gamot na iniinom para dun sa one of one of each condition, no? matatawag na rin yan na isang um, unhealth, unhealthy na condition. No? Pag meron po kayong three of the five markers, matatawag na po tayong metabolically unhealthy or meron na tayong metabolic syndrome. No? So matagal na po yung na-discovery 
itong si Dr. Gerald Raven no 1997 no at nakita niya ang pinaka primary cause po niyan ay yung too much intake of carbohydrates no kasi pag sobra po ang pag intake natin ng carbohydrates we need more and more insulin to drive the sugar down no so ang nakita niyang solusyon no is to restrict carbohydrates. Sinasabi niya, ito po dapat ang key therapy for this condition. No? And this has been the advocacy also of Dr. Tim Noakes. No? A, a marathoner, no? an athlete, 70 marathons actually to his name. No? And at the start of his career, no, he actually advocated for a high carb diet, no, because he's at least chill. No? Their thinking then, his thinking then was we need carbs, no, especially when we are um, under strenuous aerobic exercise. But despite that, no, despite having seventy marathons, he thing, he actually had type two diabetes, no. Hindi naman siya ganun kataba. No? Actually, slim siya. No? And his father actually died from complications of type 2 diabetes. So he made a major turnaround when he, he read the literature on low-carb and intermittent fasting. So ngayon, isa na po siyang advocate no, against the consequences of a high-carbohydrate diet. No? Si Dr. Tim Knox of the University of South Africa. Ito na po siya, ano, uh, Professor Emeritus, no? kasi retired na po siya. Ta active academic. No? Pero he's very active as speakers. No? Speakers sa mga marami engagements. No? Sa low-carb uh, community. So it's really about the insulin. Sabi nga dito sa journal na diabetes care, no? insulin resistance is likely the most important single cause of coronary artery disease. So ang affected talaga ng insulin, yung ating mga arteries. No? And we have 100,000 kilometers of arteries in our body no? from head to toe. No? And 80% of that, no? Our capillaries, very small blood vessels, no, in our brain, in our heart, no, eyes, toes, fingers, kidneys. So, so do you still wonder why, no? Maraming affected ang metabolic syndrome, no. Maaring nga hindi na una yung diabetes na dumating sa atin, na una naman yung kidney problems, yung eye problems, yung heart problems, no. So, hindi, hindi man ma nagkaka-diabetes ka, dahil yung iba namang problema ang dumarating. So, kasi nga, ang affected ng insulin resistance ay blood vessels. And we have also blood supplies to nerves. Kaya nagkakaroon ng mga tingling sensation, no? numbness. No? Kasi ang nerves natin, mayroong blood supply. Every part of our body has blood supply. Kaya, ganyan ang effect ng hyperinsulinemia. No? Ang primary root cause, yung mga uh, refined carbohydrates, especially those containing fructose, no? yung mga sugary drinks, processed foods, no? mga juices, todas, no? yung pro- um, isa sa mga uh, pinanggagaling na ng fructose sa ating pagkain. No? Fructose and too much glucose. Yung mga fattening carbohydrates, sobra-sobra sa mga pasta, noodles, no? carbohydrates. No? Yung mga high-protein foods, especially yung mga, mga um, meal replacement drinks. No? And also stress can contribute to hyperinsulinemia. Kasi pag tumasang cortisol, ah, magdiligyan to 
glucose production by the liver, yung gluconeogenesis. And yan po ang consequence, metabolic syndrome. Leading to the chronic diseases of civilization. Kung tinatawag na non-communicable diseases. No? And diabetes, obesity is actually the real pandemic that is plaguing the world right now. No? And why should we be concerned with this metabolic syndrome? Lalong lalo na po ngayon no? na we are at supposedly still in the pandemic state. No? Ang mga tinamaan po ng mga severe infection no? ay yung merong mga metabolic syndrome, yung merong mga comorbidities. No? Yan po ang unang-unang tinamaan ng COVID-19. And some of them, unfortunately, did not survive. No? So, ito po ang solusyon. No? Fasting. Pag nag-fast ka, you're actually eating zero carbohydrate, zero sugar. Isa sa mga simple solusyon. No? Fasting. Ganito po ang nangyayari kasi insulin is a nutrient sensor. It stops the breakdown of glycogen and body fat. And it actually increases synthesis or the production of glycogen and body fat. No? So the more insulin we have circulating in our body, the more body fat coming from the food that we eat will be stored. No? Ganun din po sa muscle. No? Glucose is stored as glycogen in the muscle and in our liver. Yan po. No? Yung body, fats, and glycogen, yan po ang mga nangyayaring ano, balance. No? Calories in versus calories out. No? At dapat po parating balance yan. No? So, ganito pong nangyayari. Pagka low calorie or caloric restriction ang ginagawa natin. At napag-aralan na po yan noong 1944 pa ni Ansel Keys. Ansel Keys, no? Nakita niya, no? Na when you reduce the caloric intake, no? Resting metabolic rates actually declined by 40%. Yung heart shrunk by 20%. No? Heart rate is low and body temperatures drop. So pag ang ginagawa po caloric restriction, ang metabolic rate slows down. No? Ito pa yung ibang mga studies, no? 1971. Yung normal diet, yung nasa taas, no? Pagka binawasan ng calories, the metabolic rate actually goes down. So when you eat fewer calories, it is balanced by a slower metabolic rate. Yung po ang nangyayari sa ating katawan. Binabalansin niya. Pag naman tayo nag exercise no? Maraming ginakain, pero nag exercise nag bumabagal din po ang metabolism. Yan po ang nangyari din sa 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 show na Vegas Loser, no? The, the contestants, no? Very obese, were made to uh, reduce their calories to 800 to 1,000. No? And they were made to exercise vigorously. So mababa yung caloric intake nila, pero mataas yung exercise nila, yung calories out. What happened to them? No? Bumagal ang metabolism. No? In 30 weeks, bumagal. 
Oo nga, nag-lose sila ng weight, pero ang metabolism nila bumangin. Actually, pinalo up pa sila in six years. No? Ang nangyari, kahit na wala na sila sa programa, no? they were actually eating much less, but they still gained all their weight back. Yung mga contestant sa biggest loser. No? Kaya walang ano eh, walang reunion show ang biggest loser. So, exercise training, ano ang effect na exercise training sa atin? Ito po ang nangyayari pag nag-exercise. No? nag increase po yung hunger. No? Pag nag-exercise. Na-experience natin lahat yan pag tayo nag-exercise. No? Pangkaraniwan, pagka-exercise, ano, gutog tayo. Maganang kumain. No? Kaya nga ang mga pangkaraniwang fast food nasa tabi ng sports center. Dito lang sa Maritina. No? Ang katabi ng Maritina Sports Center, McDo, Jollibee, Chowking, andun na sila lahat sa paligid. Dati, McDonald's lang. Dito sa may riverbank namin, andun na rin ang McDo. <laughs> Kasi alam nila, ang mga taong nag-exercise, magulutong, gaganahang kumain. At na-experience po natin lahat yan. No? And exercise, actually, anong nangyayari? No? Pag nag-exercise tayo. No? We usually uh, compensate. No? Pag tayo nagkaroon ng vigorous exercise sa umaga, pagkaroon yun sa hapon, ha? tulog. Nangyari po sa akin yan nung ako po ay nagtetenis pa nung araw ng kabataan ko. I used to play tennis all morning. No? Pagdating sa bahay, ang sarap kumain. Pagkatapos tulog maghapon. <laughs> Nung aking kabataan, nung mga uh, early college days and high school. So, ganun po ang nangyayari. Our body compensates. Ito na yun. Ito yung biggest muscle study. 80% increase in activity. No? results in less than 80% increase in activity expenditure. So, yan po ang nangyayari. The first statement which can be made with some certainty is that a decrease in energy expenditure is a universal response to energy restriction. No? So, ganito po kasi nangyayari, no? During feeding, our insulin stays high. It inhibits, no? Pinipigilan po niya yung fat burning for lipolysis, no? So, ang tendency, puro papunta dito. We store, store, and store. And we do not get to burn the stored fat, no? Kasi inhibited by insulin ang mga fat-burning hormones. So, pag nabawasan po ang insulin, no, pag bumaba yan during fasting, now, the fat-burning hormones become activated. No? Nag nagkakaroon na tayo ng capability to burn the stored energy from fats and from glycogen. No? So, pag lumaba ang insulin, yung mga counter-regulatory hormones, rise yung mga fat-burning hormones, adrenaline or noradrenaline, yung growth hormone, cortisol, and glucagon. No? At saka yung ating sympathetic nervous system become activated. No? It allows the body, no? the insulin, low insulin allows the body to take food energy out of storage to be used for metabolism, for fat burning. No? So, yan po ang nangyari. No? 
pagparating kain ng kain, insulin is always high. No? So, hindi magamit itong fat stores no? kasi inhibited. No access to body fat. Kaya ang nangyari, nagbabalance eh. No? Babagsak ang metabolic rate para bumalansi ibig sa caloric intake. But when we do intermittent fasting, no? kahit na kumakain tayo ng two, three meals, no? with fasting intervals, especially overnight, no? kahit mas mababa yung caloric intake mo, no? our body can utilize the extra 500 calories from our fat stores. Kaya eventually, we actually lose weight. No? So, nagagamit na yung stored fat pag naubos na yung stored glycogen to be used as energy. No? So, yan ang nangyayari. From food, we get the 1,500 calories and from body fat, yung another 500. So, total pa rin, 200 calories of expenditure mo, energy expenditure. But now you lose weight kasi you are able to use your body fat stores. At hindi bumabagal ang metabolic rate pag tayo nagpa-fasting. No? And they already made studies on that. No? Maraming studies niya na I will just cite two. No? Ito, from the American Medical Journal of Nutrition. No? The, the energy, resting energy expenditure is actually stable. No? Ito pa, no? Yeah. Hindi bumabagal. At tumataas yung mga fat burning hormone in your epinephrine over time during the fast. And actually, huh? During time-restricted eating or intermittent fasting, huh? or we, the group actually ate 500 calories less per day without deliberate caloric restriction. Huh? Hindi natin napapansin na mas mababa pa yung calories na kinakain natin kasi nawawala yung cravings natin, yung vicious cycle of wanting food. No? So, kasi po, yung diet and exercise, conscious control po yan. They are under our conscious control. But for only, only for so long, no? we cannot do it alone sa conscious control lang or willpower alone. No? Kasi po, itong nasa baba, unconscious control yan. Biochemical drive po yan. No? Na hindi natin mapipigilan. No? pag ang ginagawa lang natin ay caloric restriction and exercise no eventually our body will give in to our metabolic drive to our biochemical drive to the unconscious control no? kaya sooner or later those who do caloric restriction with exercise uh, hindi siya sustainable no so both hormones and calories are important. So we should not focus alone on one, no? Ignoring the other, no? Pero fasting, tapos mag over it ka naman. After your fast, is not a good strategy, no? So, ito po ang mga ultimate causes, no? Kaya tayo nagkakawaking eating too frequently, high, highly processed foods, kadong easy ang access to food, no? kahit nasa bahay lang tayo, very easy ang access to food. Sa app lang, makaka-order na tayo. Yung mga emotional heating, mga bad habits, no? yung mga highly addictive sugar, no? too much eating out. No? So we should treat the root causes, not just the proximate. No? We want to know why we are eating too many calories. Not that we are saying, no, just eat fewer calories. No? 
it's just like saying no sa paggamot ng depression no to just cheer up no just eat fewer calories it's not you know it's not possible so ito ang ibabalik natin yung metabolic flexibility no kasi nandito karamihan ng tao ngayon very ano inflexible ang metabolism no they are mostly sugar burners no with intermittent fasting we can actually become metabolically flexible able to utilize glucose and fatty acids fatty acids interchangeably no Ano bang ginagawa ng fasting for our body and mind? No? It will take a while. No? Kaya lahat naman merong learning curve. No? Pero from day one, marami na tayo mapapansin. In actually, three weeks kahit one one week lang may mapapansin na kayo bulit yung mga ano yun yung mga measurements no yung steep belly fat lumalambot no yung pagtulog mag-improve yung snoring mawawala no and your cells become revitalized no And prolonged periods of hunger can turn your body into a fat-burning machine. At magkakaroon po tayo ng balance between fasting and eating periods. No? So nababalance yung ating hormones. No? And we avoid yung pitfall, yung insulin resistance or metabolic syndrome. And if it will keep our heart and liver in check, at unti-unti po natin mararamdaman ang pagkakaiba. Blood pressure will improve, no? Cravings will disappear, no? At isa pang magandang effect niya sa brain, it actually supercharges our brain, no? Yung merong substance na napuproduce sa ating brain, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. No? It actually uh, stimulate stem cells in our brain to become new neurons and to improve neuroplasticity, yung interconnection ng mga neurons. So, so mag-improve ng cognitive function. No? It may even prevent Alzheimer's disease or even Parkinson's disease. So ang brain natin kasi, it's capable actually of utilizing ketones from fat. No? Pag tayo po ay nagiging fat adapted na, hindi lang po glucose ang source ng energy ng ating brain. No? 20% na lang sa glucose and 80% coming from ketones from fat. No? So, nag adapt yung ating brain to utilize ketones from fats and, and our brain actually becomes more energy efficient. No? And there are other ways to boost PDMF. No? Exercise, deep sleep, no? meditation, sunlight, no? yung green tea, no? dark chocolate, no? Huwag mo yung milk chocolate no? and colorful vegetables. No? So, I will stop here. No? Uh, sa part 2 na yung susunod. No? Yung other benefits of fasting, yung fasting protocol. No? So, I give you back to Trish for... Oh, please. 
Alright. Wow. Ako, uh, lalagpas na ako sa ora. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Okay. So, thank you so much, Doc. That was a lot of knowledge and a lot of, you know, information towards our health, our body, and how it functions so that, you know, we could live a healthier life. And it's an incredible, incredible presentation from you, Bo. Um, that, okay, so uh, there is, a, since, like I said, there's a lot of information. So obviously, if you need uh, to, to uh, if you need to uh, watch this again, we have our, our uh, replays in the, in, the, in the Facebook page. Okay, so um, this is actually a, uh, an event sponsored by Neutralite. Neutralite is our um, supplement brand that uh, that is very organic, very um, very good, and uh, they come from their own certified organic farms, and they've been around for eighty years. So, unfortunately, we cannot share with you our um, videos of Neutralite, but however, we do have our part two next Sunday. So. Um, we can share with you more, uh, more things and more information about our sponsor, Neutralite. And by then, um, we can share you also more videos. Okay, so um, thank you so much. But before we move on, to those who don't have their um, breakout room numbers, please put them right now so we can add you to your respective breakout rooms. And um, yeah, let me just... Uh, let me just uh, uh, promote our next event. So tomorrow we'll be having our optimal life um, program or event where we talk about the three different um, uh, programs that Syzygy has. And uh, we share a little bit of things so that you would have an idea of how we work here at Syzygy and what we focus on. So um, if you have any friend or if you know anyone who would be uh, who are new or if you you yourself is new, then you will have uh, an, a great time learning about this, the three different programs that we have. So if you're interested in finances and uh, so we have optimal wealth program, if you're interested in health, we have optimal health like one uh, we saw tonight. And if you're interested in personal development, we have optimal self program which um, will be explained more in the, uh, uh, in the event tomorrow. Okay, so that's all for tonight. I'm so happy to have seen you guys and to have you guys here. And uh, we'll see you guys in the breakout rooms. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Hi, Jane. Long time no see. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi, John. Hi, Jane. Hi, Benny. Hello, Mommy Jane. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Yes, Hello, Ms. Yol. Oo nga. Magkita-kit <laughs> tayo <laughs> sa ano, yung West October. Yes. Po. Diba? <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. Hi, Dalian. Hello po, Mami Jane. Uh -uh. Noted, ah. Noted, Dalian. Yes, po. <laughs> Lahat ba sila, Dalian? Lahat? Oh. Walang nakapag... Uh, ano? And yes po, ang, ang dala, oh no. dalawa yung EBO, EBO, ano? Oh Isa lang pala yung EBO, dalawa ang EES. Oo. Oh, oh. What? No, no, no. What I mean...